Hello, my name is Tom McDonald, and today I'm going to talk about my thesis, Exploring the Flip Classroom in a Community College Setting. The, the Flip Classroom has created a lot of buzz in recent years, not only in the educational community, but also in the mainstream media. Uh, the premise of the Flip Classroom is to reverse the customary sequence of listening to a lecture uh, in class, and then uh, as a homework assignment, uh, doing some application or problem solving. Uh, to a model where students <clears throat> watch multimedia lectures online before class and then do application and problem solving in class with the instructor available as a guide. And the basic premise of this is to move that passive transmission of content out of the classroom to make room for active and collaborative learning while still retaining the ability to cover a volume of content. I conducted a study uh, uh, literature search, I should say, and I uncovered 49 studies that studied uh, actual flipped classrooms in a post-secondary environment. Uh, in general, uh, the majority of students had positive attitudes about the flipped classroom. Um, many uh, felt that it uh, increased their learning. Um, they liked it uh, for as an opportunity to uh, collaborate and uh, have uh, richer discussions. They liked the uh, increased instructor feedback and interaction, and they felt that videos and multimedia were uh, an effective way to learn basic concepts, and they appreciated the uh, flexibility of the format. With regard to workload, um, student attitudes were mixed. There was a uh, sizable number of students that felt that uh, they didn't like the flipped classroom because th of the increased independent learning um, they felt was involved. Students in the flipped classroom um, were engaged, uh, and there was anecdotal evidence that they were uh, more prepared for class than normal. About a third of the studies overall uh, assessed student performance between a flipped classroom and a traditional approach. Uh, about half of those studies found that uh, there was an increase in student performance in favor of the flipped classroom, whereas the other half of the studies found no difference at all. So this leaves uh, two gaps in the literature. First, uh, all of the studies focused exclusively on university students. Uh, community college is a uh, major part of the post-secondary landscape in Canada, uh, representing uh, over a third of post-secondary enrollments. It might be that uh, the flipped classroom could be more or less effective in a community college environment um, based on the applied nature of the curriculum and the unique aptitudes of community college students. Uh, another thing I had issue with was that the flipped classroom is almost always compared against a lecture-based approach. Now this makes total sense because um, lecturing is probably uh, the most prominent or one of the most prominent uh, teaching methodologies uh, available um, that actually happens in, in universities and colleges. Um, however, a lot of the things that have been written about the flipped classroom are the same things that have been written in the literature on active and collaborative learning, uh, namely that it has a positive effect on uh, student attitudes um, and student engagement, and uh, at least for more demanding cognitive processes, uh, an impact on performance. So my question is whether or not the uh, flipped classroom actually impacts these things itself, uh, or if it's just a product of the these advantages are just a product of the active and collaborative learning that's going on inside of the flipped classroom. So my study sought to uh, address these two gaps. I had five research questions. The first one was, how does the flipped classroom approach impact college students' overall perception of the learning experience in a computer programming course compared to an active collaborative approach and a conventional lecture assignment approach? Now that's admittedly a little bit broad, so the next three research questions narrow it down a bit. How does the flipped classroom approach impact college students' perception of cognitive presence, perceptions of teaching presence, and perception of social presence in a computer programming course compared to an active collaborative approach and a conventional lecture assignment approach? 
And then finally, the last question was, how does the flipped classroom approach impact college students' performance in the same context? So the uh, basic design for this study uh, uses a mixed method design because I felt that having both the uh, quantitative data uh, as well as qualitative data um, was going to be helpful in getting a, a richer understanding of um, what the impact of the flipped classroom was on students compared to the other approaches. The quantitative data was um, mostly Likert scale question surveys, survey questions, um, as well as uh, quiz grades. Um, the analysis of that data served as the primary means for assessing the student learning experience and student performance. The qualitative data was uh, open-ended survey, oops, open-ended survey questions uh, primarily, um, which I analyzed for uh, emerging themes, and that served as a kind of a complementary um, means to assess the learning experience. Specifically, I was trying to get some context to the uh, qualitative findings. Um, I used convenience sampling to uh, recruit from three sections of a computer programming course that I taught in 2014 at a mid-sized community college. Um, there were 103 students in total. Um, the basic procedure was that I uh, divided the course into multiple units. Uh, each unit was about two weeks long. I would teach the unit uh, based on one of the three teaching approaches I was studying, and then the students would assess it with a survey um, and also take a quiz, um, uh, a unit content quiz. So the uh, first unit that I uh, um, taught with was using the traditional lecture assignment approach, and the students assessed it. And then two weeks later, they took uh, a unit using the active collaborative approach, and uh, they assessed that. Uh, two weeks after, they took a flipped classroom uh, unit and assessed that. And then for the rest of the course, uh, the cycle just repeated itself one more time. So the uh, fourth unit was back to the uh, traditional lecture assignment approach, then active collaborative, and then the last unit of the course was uh, back to the flipped classroom. So overall, the students had the opportunity to assess each one of these teaching approaches twice. Um, the students rated their overall learning experience on the total core evaluation scale, uh, which was based on Garrison's Community of Inquiry framework. On this scale, both the flipped classroom and the active collaborative uh, teaching approach were rated significantly higher by the students than the lecture assignment approach was. The students also rated the overall learning experience on what I called the parallel attitude scale, uh, which measured general attitudes and preferences, specifically whether the learning activities in and out of class were worthwhile, whether they found the approach uh, effective generally, and whether or not um, the pro approach they experienced was their preferred approach. Um, on this scale, the active collaborative approach was rated significantly higher than the lecture assignment approach, just like previously. However, uh, the flipped classroom was really no different than the other two approaches. Um, the qualitative comments revealed that uh, in terms of the flipped classroom, some students felt that it wasn't uh, an effective uh, teaching approach for them. Um, there's a number of reasons uh, why this might be, and I think that uh, looking at the subsequent research questions might shed some, some light on those reasons. The cognitive presence scale uh, measured how the students felt uh, the approach engaged them in thinking and learning. Uh, on this scale, quantitatively, there was no statistical differences between the three approaches. Uh, which is actually kind of unusual when you consider how much students wanted to talk about these, uh, uh, this particular category. Um, specifically, almost half of the qualitative responses that the students provided um, had to do with either application of concepts or student engagement. Uh, so we'll just take a few minutes to talk about some of those qualitative differences. In terms of the lecture assignment approach, uh, one of the things that the students talked about was that the uh, actual lecture 
uh, good or bad, did prepare them for the practical assignment. So that kind of suggests that uh, pairing lectures with, um, with practical assignments is in fact an effective approach for community college students. Um, in terms of the active collaborative approach, um, one of the big things that came across was the uh, idea that students felt that the homework assignment, which was essentially problem, a problem they had to solve, was easier um, than uh, problem solving in, in other units. Um, and so that kind of suggests that, uh, similar to the research, you know, the, that active learning and collaborative learning approaches are good for um, developing problem solving skills. Um, the flipped classroom, the comment that came up um, a few times with some students was that uh, applying the concepts from the videos was very difficult uh, when it came to um, the practical problems in the class. So they had, they had a difficulty bridging that gap. Now, one of the things one might think is right off the bat is like, well, perhaps the, the videos didn't do a very good job of explaining the basic concepts or perhaps the students didn't watch the videos in the first place. Um, however, uh, in this particular study, uh, the students rated the videos as effective for learning basic concepts and the uh, viewer um, analytics, the, the video analytics, which looked at retention data, um, suggested very strongly that the majority of the students did in fact watch the videos. What's more likely the, the issue um, is the nature of the problems, the in-class problem solving that we were doing in those units. The problems tended to be, not always, but they tended to be longer, uh, a little bit less well-defined and uh, more minimally guided than the in-class uh, exercises that I was doing in the active collaborative approach. It could be that this type of more advanced problem solving um, is not necessarily appropriate for college students at this level. Um, the, the literature kind of supports this with some, some of the researchers suggesting that the flipped classroom is not appropriate for first year students. Uh, another thing that uh, kind of leads me to believe this is uh, the evidence that's, that suggests that more teacher directed active learning is uh, more effective than minimally guided uh, uh, approaches. Now, in terms of student engagement, uh, it wasn't really that much of a surprise that the students found sitting through a lecture, um, uh, you know, kind of boring and tough. Uh, it was what they were sort of used to, but it's not necessarily the most exciting thing. Uh, alternatively, it's also not a surprise that they were, um, you know, more engaged with hands-on activities in the active collaborative learning uh, approach. What was a surprise was that with the flipped classroom, uh, the literature suggests that there's going to be this increase in student engagement, and there was no real evidence of that in um, uh, the students' qualitative uh, comments. So there's, there's a couple of reasons why that might be the case. Uh, one, the uh, actual videos themselves uh, may be no more exciting than a lecture. They're segmented differently into shorter chunks, but if the students are, are finding listening to concepts in a live lecture boring, uh, there's sort of no reason to believe that they would find listening to the same stuff uh, in a YouTube video any more exciting. Um, another issue might be that uh, computer programming at this level is essentially applied problem solving. Um, the videos were mostly about conceptual information, so the students may uh, not have felt that that conceptual information was really helping them with their, you know, what they needed to learn, which was a practical skill. So they, they might not have thought the videos were very relevant and that might have made them more difficult to engage with. And then the, the final reason why that might, another reason why that might uh, be the case is, uh, as we know before, a lot of, a lot of students said that the in-class problem solving was too difficult. So if it was too difficult, uh, perhaps that was a reason for the students to disengage a bit. The teaching presence scale uh, measured how students felt um, the approach facilitated the acquisition of learning goals. Um, so in this case, the uh, active learning approach, active collaborative learning approach, 
was rated significantly higher than the um, lecture assignment approach. And once again, the uh, flipped classroom was really no different than the other two approaches. Um, the qualitative responses revealed that the, uh, the major reason for liking the, both the active and the flipped classroom um, was the availability of the instructor to provide guidance and feedback when the students thought it was necessary. Um, in, the, uh, in the lecture assignment approach, they appreciated being able to ask questions in the lecture, um, but they felt fairly isolated when it came to writing the assignment. Um, and they, uh, they, they definitely missed having the instructor available to answer questions immediately. Um, what they did like about the lecture assignment approach, though, is that in the lecture, they felt that the explanations were very clear um, and that I was able to signal to them what was important for them to learn. Um, so it wasn't all bad. Um, in terms of the uh, videos specifically, um, a lot of studies in the literature sort of uh, said, hey, you know, students are like like having the videos because they're flexible. And uh, there certainly were some students in this study that said the same thing. However, there were also stu uh, students in this study that said it was very difficult for them to find time to watch videos before class. And again, uh, there's a couple of reasons for that, I think. Uh, one, uh, we've already talked about, you know, whether or not they found it relevant. If they If they didn't find the videos relevant, then um, I suppose it would be difficult to make watching videos a high priority. Um, another issue would be, I think, has to do with the this course in particular and the fact that I changed the teaching approach on them every unit. There's some evidence in the uh, in the literature that says that the flipped classroom does take uh, some time for the students to adjust their study habits, um, and uh, they don't necessarily all accept it right away. Uh, it does it takes time for them to get used to it. In this study, uh, students really didn't have the opportunity to really get used to it because things were changing all the time. Um, so that might have been uh, one factor in, in, again, the reason why they found it difficult to schedule that time um, and establish a routine. The social presence scale uh, looked at how the uh, teaching approach facilitated communication, uh, group cohesion, and interpersonal relationships for the purposes of learning. Um, in this case, uh, both the flipped classroom and the active collaborative approach were rated significantly higher than the um, lecture assignment approach. Um, what was key with both of these, active and flipped, was that the students really appreciated working with one another in class. Um, that was a big plus, and, and that was seen in the, in the literature as well, so it wasn't a surprise. Uh, of course, the lecture assignment approach did not have that particular component. Now, specific to the active collaborative approach, one of the few negative things that were students said about it in this study were, had to do with keeping pace in class. Now, because the activities in the classroom were more instructor guided, uh, what ended up happening was that some students felt a little bit frustrated uh, because I thought they simply felt I was going too fast. Uh, whereas other students, uh, you know, felt a little bit frustrated because I would pause the activity periodically to help other students get caught up. So um, there was kind of that, both of those things uh, going on uh, in the classroom. Now, even though there were some qualitative comments about this, it's important to note that um, there's still no statistically significant difference in the actual ratings between these two approaches. Uh, so perhaps that means that uh, although the students were aware of that problem, uh, they at least accepted it. In terms of student performance, um, the main way that I measured student performance was through unit quizzes. Um, these quizzes were really focused on basic comprehension of knowledge only. They were not uh, problem solving, higher order thinking. They didn't have to do any analysis or synthesis or anything along those lines. Um, so based on that, uh, as you can see, there were no differences between the three approaches. Now, the fact that there's no differences between uh, the lecture assignment approach and the active collaborative approach uh, was not surprising, actually, because the uh, literature kind of suggests that when it comes to that basic comprehension of knowledge, these, these two approaches are comparable. 
it isn't really until we get to the higher order thinking skills that the act of collaborative uh, lear oops, learning is supposedly superior. Um, the fact that the flipped classroom kind of was the same, um, I suppose that, that might indicate that it, like active collaborative learning, it's comparable to lecture assignment for basics. Um, who knows uh, if, the, if the flipped classroom, the kind of the research might suggest that it is, but uh, if the flipped classroom might be better for, again, that higher level stuff. So some limitations and uh, future research opportunities. I tried my best to, obviously, to uh, make this a quality study, but there were some things that were just uh, unavoidable. Uh, so I just wanna talk briefly about each one. Um, first off, the, the sample that I used, 103 students, um, well, that was, I suppose, the, the, the number of students I was drawing from was fairly small and uh, certainly not representative. In fact, uh, virtually all of the students in my study were male. So right off the bat, um, you know, that doesn't represent all college students, certainly. So there's an opportunity here, I think, um, to do this similar, a similar type of study, but with, uh, you know, more students in different programs at different colleges with different instructors, uh, et cetera, and so on. Certainly a, and a, f a few female students uh, would be uh, definitely good as well. Um, a second issue, uh, or it's not so much an issue as much as just the reality of it, is the fact that I was both the researcher and the instructor in this study. Whenever you have that type of situation, you, you, you have to account for a potential uh, problem with that uh, unequal power relationship. So um, I, I think I put into some place that were some, some measures that were effective to ensure student anonymity. Um, and I, I have no reason to believe that they, the students you know, felt coerced or anything along those lines. Um, but it might be prudent in future studies to separate, clearly separate out those uh, roles. It wasn't practical in this particular study. Um, I can go into that, but uh, yeah, for future studies, I might, I might try to do that. Um, Early on in the study, um, the response rate for the surveys was close to 50%. And then as the, uh, as the study wore on, the response rate on surveys decreased until I think the last survey was something like an eighth of the, uh, of the total number of students. Uh, I believe what was happening there was survey fatigue. There was just a lot of surveys to do. Um, and, um, you know, that's kind of what happens. So... Um, I think there's a potential of a non-response bias coming into play, particularly for the flipped classroom surveys because there were the fewest of them um, because they were kind of later, both assessed later in the, in the study. Um, I already alluded to this before, but in this study, I was changing the teaching approach every two weeks, uh, which was potentially disorienting. Um, students do need time to acclimatize and adjust their study habits. The research showed, suggested that at least, um, and they didn't really have the opportunity to do that in this study. So that might have been a factor in how they uh, rated their, the approaches that were less familiar to them. Um, the qualitative data in this study was limited to the open-ended survey uh, question responses, which were very valuable in helping me understand or interpret at least the, the quantitative uh, results. Um, in retrospect, looking at it now, it would have been wonderful to get even deeper. Um, I would have liked to have done maybe interviews or focus groups um, to just sort of pick, it, pick apart uh, the quantitative data um, that, much, uh, that much more. Uh, wasn't possible in this study because again, I was also the researcher and the instructor had to do some anonymity stuff there. So it wasn't practical, but in future studies, I'd, I'd like to get more qualitative data. Um, there was that limited assessment of student performance that I spoke about, how I only really assessed them at the, the very uh, lowest basic comprehension level. Of course, I did assess them at higher levels of learning in the course, but because uh, how I did it was, uh, you know, the, how I calculated their marks for those types of things was different for each unit, it, I couldn't make those direct comparisons. Um, so that kind of 
uh, raises a, an issue. I, I can't. The study doesn't really contribute anything in terms of, you know, determining whether the flipped classroom um, impacts higher level learning. And then the second thing is that I'm relying quite a bit on what the student's perception of the impact on their learning was. Um, now there's some some research out there that suggests that students' perceptions of their learning and objective ratings of their learning are often highly correlated. Um, but I would have liked to have had some some data to do to check to see if if that's valid for this particular study. Um, one of the things I had to do in the study for, for practical reasons is differenti differentiate each teaching approach sufficiently uh, so that the students you know, could have something to, to rate. Um, the, the reality is though that uh, active learning is, is a huge umbrella term that you know, encompasses a wide variety of, of different learning activities. And the reality was I could have, um, I could have used you know, any, any number of different strategies in the classroom for both the active collaborative and the, and the flipped classroom approach. And uh, I think probably to different effect. If I, if I had any major changes to what I was doing in the classroom, I would expect the students would rate those uh, experiences differently and have different observations. Um, so that's, yeah, something to keep in mind. One of the things that a future study uh, might want to do is to compare an active collaborative approach uh, and a flipped classroom approach where the in-class activities were actually the same. Um, and that would give, uh, I think, an opportunity to tease out what the relative impact of having the pre-class component um, is in the flipped classroom. Um, anecdotally, as I was teaching the course, uh, every once in a while I would run into um, a situation where what I was trying, the learning objective, what I was trying to teach, and the learning activity prescribed by the teaching approach felt mismatched. Um, and that's kind of an artificial thing. In, in real life, in my real life practice, I would just simply use the uh, strategy that best suited that content. In fact, an argument could be made that you, you really select your teaching strategy based on the content or task to be learned, as well as the, uh, you know, uh, where the students are, are, are at in terms of their level of experience and, uh, and their confidence with the material. Um, so that's just something to, uh, to keep in mind. Perhaps it's what future research should, should really focus in on is not so much whether the flipped classroom is, is viable, uh, but rather what conditions or, or what learning objectives is the um, flipped classroom ideal for and what type of students the flipped classroom is ideal for. Um, so in conclusion, uh, the flipped classroom had uh, a couple of really, um, uh, really key, key strengths. One was that it provided an opportunity for students to work with one another in class, um, which they greatly appreciated. Um, and then the other key strength, I think, is the availability of the instructor to provide guidance and immediate feedback in the classroom. And I think the students recognize the, the value of both of those things. Uh, on the other hand, um, the flipped classroom showed a little bit more promise in the literature than it did in this study. Um, specifically, the flipped classroom was not significantly different than the lecture assignment approach uh, when we compared general attitudes and preferences, uh, cognitive presence, at least the ratings of cognitive presence, and teaching presence. More, moreover, uh, the students found solving problems in class, at least the format that I had them do it, was in some cases too difficult. And uh, there was no increased engagement reported in this study, contrary to the literature. Um, furthermore, the active collaborative approach was significantly higher than the lecture assignment approach in almost every category. Um, it had the same increased collaboration and instructor interaction advantage that the flipped classroom did. Um, however, the, the students felt the instructor-led exercises in class were more effective and more, more engaging. 
So uh, thinking about this from a, the perspective of a college instructor looking for a pedagogical refresh, um, perhaps it's better to focus on designing better learning activities and, and selecting better teaching strategies rather than uh, spending a lot of time producing uh, content videos and, and pre-class exercises. Those instructional strategies that, that you select have to align with not only the knowledge and skill level of your students, but also the nature of the content or task to be learned. You know, when you sit down and you, and you really do that assessment, you might find that um, flipping some of your teaching is entirely appropriate. Um, but no singular teaching approach is ideal in, in all situations, uh, including, I think what this study shows, is the flipped classroom. So that concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, is there any questions?